to tomorrow. Yeah, top 16 cut, very exciting. But right now, we've got the round seven game. We've got a really exciting pairing for you. We've got Matthias Suchlodolski, which is probably the closest I've ever pronounced it, <laughs> um, versus Lorenzo Lax. So two very good players. You can see them there on your screen, ready to go. Uh, the judge is just waiting to give them the green light to continue and jump into this game. Um, but there's going to be always an interesting Pokemon choice coming out from Matthias. Yeah, I think there will be. Um, Matthias does... Uh, does use some really unconventional teams on occasion, but also always siding for <laughs> those more um, solid builds, uh, usually quite slow and bulky, and just make sure that they're really consistent and uh, taking taking the win in a, a, a really good fashion. Uh, but yeah. Lorenzo here that we see, uh, we're chatting to him just before the uh, game started, and this is his first time on stream. Yeah, really exciting opportunity for him to be able to showcase his team here at the Cologne Regional Championships. We also had Richard Hodge on earlier, and it was his first time on stream mm -hmm. as well, and he was able to win, so Lorenzo will be hoping to follow in his footsteps here. Um, but Matthias, like we were just saying, he's a really well-known player. I actually played him myself once on stream back at the Birmingham Regional yeah. Championships, and I, I lost that game. It, it was such an amazing... Um, game from Lego and I've, every time I've played him he's always had something a little bit sneaky I remember Taunt Tyranitar will haunt me <laughs> forever um, but the game is ready let's jump straight into this on Lorenzo's side you've got the Xerneas Lunala Genghis Khan Incineroar Crobat and Amoonga it's a Pokemon that I'm really excited to see here on the field and on Matthias's side you've got the Lunala Incineroar Salamence Groudon Stack Attacker and the Tapu Fini so Groudon didn't do too well in the last round does it look like it's in a better position here well possibly I mean we're seeing those two Two Lanala matchup again, which is something that we've we've seen before and mm -hmm. uh, probably going to be seeing again quite a <laughs> bit. Um, they do seem to be doing quite well in this tournament. And you know, looking at uh, the composition of Matthias's team, it looks like it might be uh, one of those slightly slower Lanalas potentially, uh, yes. maybe opting for that Trick Room uh, stack attacker. We know works in uh, Trick Room very very well, uh, as does Tapu Fini and Cineroar, and potentially Groudon, depending on how these Pokemon are trained. But uh, Lorenzo looking to uh, be a little bit more speedy, <laughs> um, probably going to be supporting, um, trying to get that Xerneas boosted um, with support of that Lunala on his side of the field. Um, Crobat there to stop any shenanigans from Xerneas. Maybe we're probably not going to see that in this game, um, but uh, that Amoongus, if uh, Matthias does decide to go down that Trick Room uh, route with either the Stack Attacker mm -hmm. or the Lanala, uh, going to put a lot of pressure on and make sure that uh, Matthias doesn't run away with that game. Exactly. I'm loving seeing the Stack Attacker on here, actually. It does so well against a lot of Lorenzo's team. He can do a lot of damage against the Xerneas, the Gyro Ball. Again, if you've got a Rock Slide, you can see it and you can see Rock Slide. That'll do good damage against the Incineroar and the Crobat as well. But like you said, Amoongus will cause a bit of trouble for if it doesn't look like Grass Knight. It's a really slow, going to some scores, which is why having Tapu Fini on the Tears side as well is going to be a really good option for him there. Get that missing trade up. He doesn't really have to worry about it. No, certainly not, and uh, you know, but what he does have to worry about is that rain powder. Yeah. So often, taking away the rain away from the bridge. Well, straight out of the bat here, we've got Xerneas and Daniel's come for Lorenzo and Stack Attacker and just the Wolf from the TSO. I've got a feeling for a good one. Well, potentially, but maybe not just yet. Uh, you know, Lorenzo has the pass to take out here. He's got that going to run out of the field. And he's known for also running things like low kick. So that's going to be four times effective against that stack attacker. And maybe in combination with Xerneas, may be able to pick up a KO slightly later in the game. Uh, this turn, um, possibly going to see an exchange of fake outs. Just make sure from Lorenzo's side of the field that Trick Room doesn't go straight up. Um, and from uh, Matthias' side of the field, he still, even though he has a stack attacker on the field, he still does have to worry about that Xerneas just getting straight set up. Very true. It seems to be the goal. Like if Matthias was able to get the trick come up, it would put him in such a good position, but you're quite right then. Lorenzo does have to stop that from going off here, and he's got enough offensive pressure to be dealing with. Uh, but Genghis Khan going for the Mega Revolution and going for that fake out, like you said, is the faster one, going straight into that stack attacker. Obviously gets the little bit of extra tiny chip thanks to baby Genghis Khan, but it really is not doing too much. No fake out coming out from that opposing Incineroar, um, as Xerneas does go for a Geomancy. One thing that could be really interesting is if that Incineroar is doing something like Raw, it could roar away at this Geomancy boost, but I might be jumping the gun a little bit there. You might be there, but uh, <laughs> I get excited. We, do, we do see so many different techs for Xerneas. Uh, you know, once it's got that Geomancy up, we know how much damage it does, and every player has to have a way to, you know, deal with that once it's got set up or try and stop it setting up in the first place. 
Exactly. No raw. Well, you know, that could have been really exciting. <laughs> uh, but instead, going for a U-turn, a move we've seen Incineroar go for a lot here to enable it to get into a better ball position for its trainer. Um, switching that Incineroar out as well will allow it to have that fake out again later on in the game as Groudon joins the field. Again, a Pokemon that can maybe take some damage from the Xerneas, but now that it's boosted up, that's something that Matthias does have to work around. Yeah, I mean, if there was two Pokemon that you wanted to see in front of a Xerneas that's boosted, it <laughs> would probably, two. it would probably, you'd probably pick Stack Attack, you'd probably pick <laughs> Primal Groudon. Um, really good uh, typing and, uh, you know, stats for uh, taking those moon blasts and dazzling gleams really well. And Matthias is going to have to be just a little bit careful of how he managed his to deal with that low kick potential coming yes. up from Kangaskhan. Uh, maybe he wants to go for the Trick Room now and take a little bit of damage in exchange. Yeah, of course, and he has that Incineroar in the back as well. He does still have the switching opportunity to bring that back in, get another Intimidate off, so that if that Kangaskhan does go for the little kick, it will be at minus two, um, enabling the Stack Attacker to get off um, potentially a Trick Room or even just a Gyro Ball into that opposing Xerneas. Um, mm. It is indeed the Incineroar jumping back in, going to lower the attack again off Kangaskhan, uh, but this Xerneas will be ready to go. Actually, no um, damage coming out from the Stack Attacker, going straight for a Protect. So this Incineroar could easily have jumped into the way of a Moonblast, but no, it was going into that Stack Attacker Lorenzo wanting to try and remove this Pokemon from the field, but Matias protecting. Yeah, certainly, and, and some quite forced plays here. I mean, you know, that stack attack is going to be so vital for mm -hmm. uh, Matias to effectively deal with that uh, Geomancy Xerneas. And even though Groudon can take take the hits, it doesn't really want to. It um, wants to be able to use just use those precipice blades as much as it can. Uh, Lorenzo just attacking into the stack attacker, not taking the risk, and now uh, switching out into Incineroar to bring that fake out and intimidate onto his side of the field. Yeah, exactly. You want to get the intimidates off here to negate some of the attack pressure from both of these physical attackers here. And also having the fake out is going to be great going into the next turn. Um, the fake out here from the Incineroar on Matthias' side will stop Xerneas from moving, leaving the stack attacker free to go for that trick room. So Matthias now has put the board into a game state that his stack attacker looks great. Yeah, and one of the things, and you'll know this from experience, Lou, is <laughs> Matthias's targeting is usually pretty much spot on. And, oh, and we saw that definitely in this game. Taking advantage of that, uh, Kangaskhan wanting to switch out from Lorenzo's side of the field and just stopping anything coming on, um, coming off uh, this turn onto uh, his stack attacker. So fake out coming out from the Incineroar on Lorenzo's side of the field into that stack attacker. Yeah, the Xerneas staying on the field for this turn, going to utilize the advantage that that fake out gives it to be able to try and get off some damage without having to worry about the stack attacker um, picking up some good damage with a gyro ball. Um, the Incineroar on Matthias' side just going to go for that U-turn, switch off the field, and it's all going to come down to whether Xerneas is targeting its attack. Doesn't want to try and just get some chunk of damage into the stack attacker or doesn't want to target the other slot which Groudon has just jumped into. Yeah, I think uh, we're probably going to see a Moonblast go into that stack attacker. Just make sure that it's worn down for later in mm -hmm. the game. Uh, we haven't seen an item and we, we have sometimes seen a life orb coming out from yes. these kind of teams. Um, so going to be good to see what, uh, what Matthias has decided to use on his uh, side of the field as we get a critical hit coming out there mm -hmm. onto what looks like that Groudon. It was the Groudon, yes. Got a critical hit there. Yeah, so, you know, next couple of turns, we're going to see some Precipice Blades coming out from the uh, Kangas... Uh, <laughs> sorry, the Groudon, the Groudon <laughs> no, no doubt, and uh, potentially some gyrable pressure. So Matthias is going to need to really um, target well here to enable... The the best use of that trick room that he can. Yeah, Matthias really pinned down Lorenzo there, um, forcing him to switch out that Incineroar that can't afford to take a Precipice Blade. And in turn, with Incineroar on the field, there wasn't really a lot it could do against Groudon anyway, so you want to get it off the field, preserve it, so you get Intimidate later on. As, oh, I mean, I see a Z move coming out here. Wasn't expecting that straight away. Continental Crush from the Stack Attacker. This reminds me of the Oceana International Championship final. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's a memory. <laughs> yeah, that was a long old game, that one. Oh, um, but this is just such a damage dealer. Z move um, and it's going to go right into that Genghis Khan so Incineroar was right to jump out of the way. Yeah absolutely and really good play there from Lorenzo uh, both players in fact you know Lorenzo wanting to preserve his Intimidate maybe knowing that that was going to come off uh, bringing his uh, Kangas Khan back in if it comes in he can get the fake out pressure again um, with his Kangas Khan if it does go down to a combination of attacks as we've just seen mm -hmm. uh, he can bring back his uh, Incineroar back onto the field, get that fake out, get a second layer of Intimidate uh, onto both Stack Attacker and Groudon that really don't like Intimidate being out on the field. Um, and, and actually, you know, we've only got a couple more turns of t Trick Room left. Mm -hmm. uh, if we get to the end of that and Lorenzo's still in a good position 
Uh, the Xerneas hasn't been damaged too much, um, and that stack attacker hasn't been able to do something. We may be able to see Lorenzo just push the push the game back into his favor um, and uh, stop the, the second l layer of Trick Room going mm -hmm. up. Yeah, exactly. He's got the Incineroar on the field now as well for that fake out going into this turn, which just buys Xerneas another opportunity to maybe deal out some damage. Um, also, the Intimidate paying off well against both the Groudon and the Stack Attacker as their physical attackers. And that's something that we've seen a lot through this tournament. It's why Incineroar is so popular. It's so versatile. Um, and there's a lot of physical attackers in this game. Stack Attacker protecting itself from the fake out. Wise choice there by Matthias because that's exactly the target that Incineroar had chosen. As the Groudon goes for a press displays. Accuracy is in his favor right now. It connects on both <laughs> of these Pokemon. Incineroar is able to hang on. As you can see, that Intimidate really, really working out for him. Activating his berry, regaining a little bit of health. And of course, Xerneas was able to survive as well. Yes, yeah, certainly. And we'll see what that Xerneas decides to do. Just a Dazzling Gleam and making sure that, you know, we, we don't know uh, from Lorenzo's side of the field whether uh, Matthias is going to protect. Mm -hmm. So just making sure that he gets some damage off. Yes, exactly. And particularly as it was able to survive that precipice blade so well. It's still in the green health, still got a lot of health there. It can go for another protect and stall out this trick room a little longer. Yeah, exactly. Only one more turn of trick room left. So, you know, Lorenzo may have to reveal what's in the back and hopefully that, you know, for him that, that manages to deal with both of these Pokemon as we see the Lunala come out. Yeah, he does reveal it. There we are, Lunala on the field. Um, and as he has Genghis Khan was KO'd, he doesn't have access to that low kick we saw him reveal either. So the more chip he can get against the stack attacker, the better for him in the end game. Matias, though, knowing, like he said, it's the last turn of Trick Room, wants to get that Incineroar on the field. Not only does it now greatly pressure that Lunala, um, but it will allow him the fake out next turn to try and get that Trick Room back up again. You just yeah. have to worry about Lunala maybe trying to Trick Room too. Absolutely. Or, in fact, you know, we see um, the Incineroar come in, as you say, from mm -hmm. Matthias, but, you know, that doesn't affect uh, Lunala. So, yes. you know, a real opportunity there for Lorenzo to just maybe go for a Moongeist Beam, maybe decide that he doesn't want to take the risk and, mm -hmm. and drop a Menacing Moonray's Maelstrom into that stack attacker slot and just make sure that that stack attacker goes down this turn mm -hmm. and the Trick Room doesn't go back up again. Yeah, that's something you said really early on. If the Trick Room goes up, you can work around it, but you cannot afford to let it get set up again. Otherwise, you're just sort of not undoing the work you've just done, but you've just made it a whole lot harder for yourself. You've got to get back into that again um, and reposition yourself. So if he's able to use this Lunala to either pick up a KO or reverse the Trick Room, we've seen Lunala often carry that um, as a means of speed control or to reverse the opposing speed control. It could put him into a great position. He's got to remember that Xerneas is boosted. You want to use that power. Yes, yeah, certainly. And... You know, we've got to remember we've seen the Continental Crush come out from the Stack Attacker, so definitely no uh, Z move there from the Incineroar. So Lanala should just be able to um, take any attack that uh, Incineroar has to offer. Yeah, and even if Lunala, you know, will fall victim to something from Incineroar, it's going for that Z, Z move, um, going... I I think it's got to be going into that stack attacker slot. And I think going for the Z-move over a Moongeist Beam is actually worth it in this situation, because even if stack attacker had protected, you're going to be able to break through that protect and do a good chunk of damage. Yeah, exactly. You definitely put it into uh, Moongeist Beam range next mm -hmm. uh, next turn. That 25% damage that goes through protect on Z-moves coming in crucial there in the way that he's played this turn. Um, and just making sure that he gets the most out of uh, this Lanala and <laughs> Matthias gets the least <laughs> out of that stack attacker. Yeah, you're just protecting your Xerneas, really, and that's something that's really crucial. If you are a Xerneas player and you get that boost up, you do not want to waste it. It takes a turn to set up as well, um, and it's just got such offensive power. Um, you want to be able to use that against your opponent's Pokemon. The Flare Blitz with a critical hit and the burn <laughs> coming out from Incineroar. I think Incineroar's oh got something to say about this. Um, you know, you want to protect your Xerneas, but I'm going to critical hit it and I'm going to burn it. I mean, that's one way. Yeah, that, I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. And apparently, oh. where there's an Incineroar, there's a way now. <laughs> so, oh, uh, definitely. You know, wow. Matthias, he's he's trying to pressure the Xerneas. And, you know, it's a good move anyway, right? You mm -hmm. know, the, the critical hit happens and the burn happens. And, you know, sometimes these things happen in Pokemon. Uh, he played the right move anyway. And all of the things aligned. And he, yes. was, he was able to get an even better position than he could have from just taking damage. But Matthias still got ground and an unrevealed Pokemon in the back. So... Just having a little think, what's he going to do? Is he going to bring the Groudon in? Uh, it's a low health. We saw that from earlier in the game. It's mm -hmm. taken two Dazzling Gleams from Xerneas, even in Trick Room um, from Ooh. Matthias. And here we see Tapu Fini coming out. So just wanting to maybe play a little bit more of a slow game here. 
Yeah, Tappy Finney picking the perfect time to jump onto the field. I bet the Xerneos on Lorenzo's side was hoping to see it earlier to avoid that burn. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's interesting now that it's come in, the fourth Pokemon on the field, it's able to um, deal out a little bit of pressure. It's not often the most offensive Pokemon, but if it can start going for things like some Icy Wind or um, any kind of Nature's Madness, that can just start chipping away at the Lunala, for example. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, what what you've got to be uh, looking out for here is, is that Shadow Shield broken? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the potential dark move on Incineroar? We haven't seen that yet. Um, and, you know, that's going to play a, a huge role if uh, Matthias is able to just, you know, get the, get to a position where the Xerneas is off the field and the Incineroar isn't. Yeah, well, Incineroar has jumped off the field. The dark move is going to be hidden for another turn, at <laughs> least, as the Groudon rejoins us, brings the sun onto the field as well. Ooh. Tapu Fini just going for a protect here um, as Lunala goes for wide guard. So that's some good information for Matthias as well, knowing that he couldn't necessarily go for Precipice Blades safely anymore. As Xerneas will go for this Moonblast, is boosted, it's going to be powerful, and it's targeting that Groudon on the switch and going to easily pick up the KO, um, putting Matthias down to now his last two Pokemon of Incineroar and Tapu Fini. Yeah, and, and, you know, really good uh, play there from Matthias. Uh, you know, not necessarily wanting to reveal Protect on Tapu Fini, but actually the right move to uh, use in that situation. Just make sure to take full advantage of that burn um, that uh, the Flare Blitz inflicted onto the Xerneas there. Uh, make sure it's off the field. And coming in, Incineroar versus Incineroar, uh, both of them going to be intimidated and probably yes. stay intimidated for the rest of the game. Uh, the big question is whether this Finny um, is able to maybe use a water move or uh, use some other, other form of offensive pressure to uh, pressure Lorenzo's Incineroar. Yes. Um, because if that uh, stays on the field and does all of those little U-turns and manages <laughs> to just chip away at uh, Matthias's uh, Incineroar before the Incineroar is able to take out the Lunala, then Lunala's probably got a good time against Tapu Fini. Yeah, exactly. And like you said as well, Ben, that Lunala's still got a Shadow Shield intact, so it's still got that little extra defense at the moment. If Lorenzo is able to get rid of the Incineroar that undoubtedly applies the greatest pressure at the moment, um, he's going to be able to put himself in a greater position. Goes for the Tailwind here. Yes, he faked out into the opposing Incineroar, so it cannot move this turn, but he now guarantees that his Incineroar will outspeed. <laughs> Tapu Fini, though, um, you know, actually saying I am an offensive Pokemon, Lou. Yeah. I'm going to go for a Skull straight into that Incineroar. Takes it down to 16 hit points. So it's good information again for Lorenzo here, but Incineroar also has to watch out. Yeah, certainly. And, uh, you know, not often you see a water move on a Pokemon on, on a team that doesn't have a Rayquaza or mm, it's got uh, Kyogre. It's got a Groudon. <laughs> you know, those things fizzle. But, you know, we <laughs> see why the, these players opt for moves like this in mm -hmm. this situation. Because when you get to the end of the game, the Groudon's not necessarily in play. And, you know, Incineroar is, uh, uh, as you put it, so so aptly a very pesky pokemon <laughs> yes it is oh uh, very much like the cat that it's modeled after um but <laughs> is a move guys been coming out here from lunala so it has already used its z move so it's going to be down to its offensive moves here um and the moon guys keep going straight into that incineroar does barely any damage is not very effective as the incineroar is able to go for a flare blitz on lorenzo's side so this is going into the imposing incineroar probably the Ooh. most offensive move that it's got at the moment again neither of um, lorenzo's pokemon can really do a lot to this incineroar it's quite beneficial for them that it is actually at such a low health. Unfortunately though as well, the Lunala is now taken down to 50% damage. Not only is it Shadow Shield broken, it's also got reduced health and this Darkest Lariat will take no prisoners. Absolutely not and we see the head shake from Lorenzo. Oh. Um, you know, he wanted that Flare Blitz to uh, finish off the uh, Incineroar on Matthias' mm -hmm. side of the field. A combination with Moongeist Beam and turns out to be not quite enough to, uh, to pick up the KO there and Matthias just doing what he does with mm -hmm. these solid bulky Pokemon and yes. just making sure, you know, at the end of the game, he just lives with a sliver and makes sure that he can get his attacks off and uh, close out a game. Yeah, exactly. And I believe was the Incineroar on Lorenzo's side also intimidated? It was. Both of them were intimidated. Yeah. yeah, so that again will reduce the damage of Flare Blitz. If it maybe hadn't taken that Intimidate, it could possibly have picked up the KO for him um, and just put Lorenzo in a slightly happier position going forward. Because um, if Tapu Fini, yes, it's got Skull, but um, it, that's not going to be dealing a huge amount to Lunala. It might have been able to fire off a couple of Moongeist Beams mm. um, and try and clutch it out. But good to know the Darkest Lariat's on um, Matthias' side as well. We often actually see that with the Incineum Z um, crystal on there as well. Um, so it's nice to see it out in the format again. Um, but again, that game came down really, really closely. I'm not too sure what Pokemon changes I would make. I'd probably stick with the same four. I don't see there being too many, too much reason to uh, change it up. Uh, you know, 
Lorenzo was able to get through that trick room that uh, mm -hmm. Matthias set up, and he and he did it effectively. He did you very know. well. Yes, there's a couple of little turns where maybe you could get a little bit more of an advantage. Maybe um, use Moonblast to KO a Groudon where uh, mid game, uh, last game, that the Dazzling Gleam didn't pick up the KO on, mm -hmm. and it looked like it possibly would have done with the Moonblast. So maybe little slight changes to the way that Lorenzo plays the game, um, even though Matthias is trying to take advantage of the uh, trick room, maybe he can still be a little bit more offensive in that trick room if he lets uh, Matthias set it up. And and to be fair, you know, Matthias, he, he knew what his win cons were. Mm -hmm. he, he put himself on the front foot and, you know, maybe didn't make as much uh, use of that trick room as he could have done, but actually made enough use of it. Yes, and I love the late game Tapu Fini reveal as well. He really kept that Pokemon in the bag until the last couple of turns. It was able to come and give the surprise scold um, and also just start going through the team with that Nature's Madness, cleaning up the rest of the field for its partner Pokemon. But round seven, game two, here we are trainers. The Pokemon are on the field. It's going to be the Stack Attacker and Incineroar for Matthias, as it is the Genghis Khan and the Xerneas for Lorenzo. Very similarly to Ben. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you do see this on, on good quality games that mm -hmm. you know these players understand their matchups they almost flow chart their way through these games and, yes. and you know when you get to this level you know these kind of these kind of formats where you have restricted pokemon they there's a way to play it and there's a way to start a game mm -hmm. and uh, these these players obviously both very comfortable in the way that they are approaching the game uh, again as we said you know maybe a couple of little changes here and there through the the following turns because you know, we Knowledge saw and everything. Absolutely. You know, eight, nine turns, there's a lot of variation that can mm -hmm. happen there. Uh, but one thing that isn't varying is that the Kangaskhan's <laughs> going to go for a mega evolution. <laughs> exactly. Baby Kang's got to be involved in this round seven game. Um, it's going to be going for the fake out here straight away. Um, targeting down that stack attacker once again, going to stop it going off for any moves in this turn one. Um, of course, hitting twice thanks to Baby Kang. Uh, fake out this time coming from the Incineroar. Though last time it decided to not go for that move and allowed Xerneas to set up, bringing it down back to a stalemate going into this game too. And it's small adjustments like this, once you've got the information from your opponent's team, that you can start changing your style. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, Matthias not changing his position here. Uh, the Xerneas not getting a Geomancy. So we've already seen after turn one some really fundamental changes to, to how they, they are going to be approaching this game as Kangas Khan just goes straight on the offensive. Does it pick up the KO? Oh. Not quite. Is it going to follow up with the Xerneas? Here we go. The Moonblast. Is it enough? Oh, it's going into the stack attacker. It is a double up. It oh. is enough. <laughs> Huge sigh of relief there for Lorenzo. He's got rid of that stack attacker that caused him so much trouble in the last game. Incineroar going for a U-turn. Going to switch back out to his trainer and allow Matthias to switch up his ball positioning after that devastating blow, losing his stack attacker. The low kick, such a bold play there from the Genghis Khan. Matthias knew about it as well, and he yep. was being brave, staying on the field. And despite the intimidate, knowing that it wasn't going to pick up the KO, Lorenzo was able to go and double into it. Knew not to Geomancy. On Honestly, just a perfectly played turn. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And uh, we talked about small changes, but we didn't talk about big changes. <laughs> big uh, big low kicks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, really great turn there for Lorenzo. Um, correctly predicting. With Matthias, obviously, in game one, he stopped mm -hmm. that low kick and uh, Moonblast com uh, combination from um, really working and, mm -hmm. uh, and got himself into a position where he could be in trick room. Uh, this time, Lorenzo takes the advantage with making sure that he removes that stack attacker from the field and um, you know doesn't have to deal with that trick room for the rest of the game and we said in team preview Lorenzo's got the speedier team yeah so you know we're gonna see uh, Lorenzo being on the front foot for the rest of the game but I wouldn't count Matthias out just yet oh 100 percent not that KO when the U-turn from the Incineroars allowed him to switch up his ball positioning. We see Groudon on the field, we see Tapu Fini, and Xerneas has not boosted up. Gangscon as well, having taken the Intimidate, um, isn't going to be dealing out as much damage. And that Nature's Madness from the Tapu Fini can halve the HP of either of these Pokemon, really weaken them for a follow-up attack from, say, for example, the Plespis Blades. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Incineroar can switch in, Intimidate that Groudon, but it's going to take a Precipice Blades mm -hmm. um, in response, most likely. Um, and that uh, Tapu Fini, really going to be content to fire off maybe Icy Winds, Nature's Madness, mm -hmm. as you said. Um, going to be able to just uh, bring uh, Lorenzo's health overall uh, down into a position where that Groudon may be able to just clean up the game. 
Yeah, exactly. Groudon applying such offensive pressure at the moment. I don't see any switches going off here. Xerneas instead just going for a protect, playing a little bit defensively as Genghis Khan goes boldly for a double edge. Going straight into that Tapu Fini, just wants to get as much damage off on it as possible. Not quite doing 50% um, as, as, oh, I thought I was about to say a Z-move was coming out there from <laughs> the animation. Are getting very excited by this game, but Xerneas protecting herself up here from the Precipice Blades. Genghis Khan is going to have to take this attack thanks to the damage it had previously. It Ooh. takes it down just into the red. And I was right, there is a Z-move coming out here. It's a Twinkle Tackle yeah, or a Guardians of Alola. Absolutely, one of the two. Uh, so we'll see which one uh, Matthias opted to go for. I would be picking Aww. that Twinkle Tackle, <laughs> um, as we see here. Um, so that's quite possibly going to be going into the, the uh, Xerneas, as we mm -hmm. see there. Uh, going to be doing a little bit of damage through the Protect. Um, not too much, but, you know, all of these things add up. And, mm -hmm. and this is where Matthias is going to need to uh, be playing the rest of his game. He's going to be, you know, making sure that every turn he gets a little bit more of an advantage, a little bit more of an advantage. And actually looking at the way that they're trained, that Tapu Fini taking less than 50% to uh, from that double edge mm -hmm. means that both Moonblast and double edge uh, from both Xerneas and Kangaskhan probably not going to be able to pick up the KO. Uh, maybe going to munch on that berry a bit later on um, and yes. add a little bit more value to the game. So this is the sort of thing that Matthias is going to need to go, go and do turn by turn, just a little by little, uh, until he's back in a good position. Exactly, and I love this play here from Lorenzo. Switching in the Incineroar, going to apply some Intimidate to that opposing Groudon. So even if it does go for a Plespis Blades, Xerneas should be able to survive it thanks to the Intimidate, able to get up a Geomancy. And as the Sun's on the field, we know that Tapu Fini cannot go for anything like a Scold, so it could only go for a Nature's Madness that couldn't pick up the KO anyway. Um, mm. So it could have been a great play there if that was the strategy he went through. Incineroar though, however, jumping in for Matthias as well. Tapu Fini leaving the field as Matthias wants to have that fake out and intimidate against the opposing Incineroar as well. This is the opportunity for Xerneas to go for that Geomancy. He's going to get a special attack, special defense, and speed boosts plus two um, in this game. But of course, you have to worry about the Precipice Blades coming out from that Groudon because it's going to hurt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Those rocks are indeed pointy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, uh, you know, Lorenzo getting a getting a uh, Geomancy up. We'll see if the uh, Groudon opts for a Precipice Blades or for a Fire Punch and just make sure it gets the damage. But we do see the Precipice Blades going to do going to hit on both targets, doing a bit of damage to the Xerneas mm. and taking that Incineroar just above berry range there. Yeah, not quite enough to proc that berry and regain some of its health. But the Intimidate paying off both Pokemon survive on the field. Yes, Matthias does have that fake out now, but Xerneas can just protect. Yeah, it certainly can. But you've got to look at. Uh, Incineroar on Matthias' side of the field, boosted by that sun, mm -hmm. uh, going to be able to probably pick up a KO on that Xerneas if it chooses to. So maybe this turn, opting for Fake Out um, onto the Xerneas and just, you know, seeing if they can, if Groudon can clear the field with that Precipice Blades. Well, it's going to be a Protect on Xerneas, a Protect on Groudon, both the restricted here, um, <laughs> playing it cool for one a particular turn. Flare Blitz, though, coming out from the um, Incineroar on Matisse side, just like you said there, Ben, wasn't going to go for the Fake Out, just wanted to try and get some damage off as U-Turn comes out from the Incineroar on Lorenzo's side. So again, Lorenzo wanting to switch up his ball positioning. Could always bring back in the Genghis Khan now at this stage um, to try and get that Fake Out off again. Yeah, we've seen a, a, a lot of these uh, teams really supporting their Xerneas, and mm -hmm. we've seen uh, Eva Incineroar paired with uh, Kangaskhan, as mm -hmm. we see here. Uh, fake out, fake out, fake out, fake <laughs> out, and uh, you know, making sure that the Xerneas can really uh, set off its offensive pressure. But you know, we've also seen that Amoongus paired with Incineroar that does it in a slightly different way. Um, either way, Lorenzo playing this game brilliantly, mm -hmm. just making sure that he always has the fake out in play as much as he can. Uh, that Xerneas may be at low HP, but Incineroar's taken a little bit of chip damage. There's some fake out going on on the field. Um, so, you know, Lorenzo's still on the front foot there, um, and Matthias is going to need to uh, carry on finding those ways to just do a little bit more and do a little bit more um, as we go into the next few turns. Exactly. That Groudon's still going to be applying a lot of pressure as well. Um, if the fake out goes into... Um the Incineroar, for example, the Groudon's still going to be able to do that a lot with the Precipice Blades. And a Moonblast, I don't believe, will be able to pick up the KO against that Groudon at full health. Certainly not. Certainly not. And we do see the uh, Kangaskhan going for Fake Out there on the Groudon. Ooh. Yeah, going straight into the Groudon, giving it a nice little bit of chip that will help out the Moonblast later on in the game. But no Moonblast at the moment. Dazzling Gleam going for the double target option here, chipping away at that Groudon even further and doing some damage to the Incineroar as well. Incineroar, though, going for that Flare Blitz. If this is going into that... Um, 
Xerneas, which it is, it's going to do a good chunk of damage and enough to pick up the KO thanks to that boost from the Sunshine. Yeah, absolutely. And no Intimidate coming out from Lorenzo trying mm. to stop that from happening. And, you know, probably quite wisely just making sure that he gets a little bit of damage on that Groudon, gets a little bit of damage on that Incineroar. Um, and, you know, with, we're, with, we've been talking about how uh, Matthias just creeps back into the game little mm -hmm. by little, but, you know, you can't creep back into the game when your Pokemon are at low HP. So Lorenzo really identifying that and making mm -hmm. sure that, you know, he has a good spread of damage over yes. all of uh, all of Matthias' uh, Pokemon. And you know that Gangaskhan has low kick because that's something that the Incineroar um, wouldn't want to take either, particularly at that low health, which is why the switch in for Tapu Fini here. Um, I think it's a really good call by Matthias. Not only are you preserving your Incineroar on the back, but you are covering potentially um, a low kick into that slot. Um, it's exactly what Gangaskhan is going for. Yeah, um, so go. Tapu Fini jumping in was really a great call there from Matthias. Um, as the Lunal is here, on the field, um, actually going to go straight for that Z move. Um, the Menacing Moonray's Maelstrom. Now that was going into that ground to try and pick up the KO again. The protect was a really great decision from Matthias. Great defensive turn for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's better to have a ground than not to have a ground, uh, <laughs> as we always say. Uh, but you know, this uh, Menacing Moonray's Maelstrom through the protect, doing that 25% damage through uh, through that protect mm -hmm. is going going to. Uh, All probably is going to absolutely add up. It's probably going to leave that Groudon in Moongeist beam range. So, you know, bringing the uh, Tapu Fini in was a great call, and it's it's going to do uh, quite a bit of work, I'm sure, in the next couple of turns. But that Groudon really does have to worry now um, about taking a couple of attacks. Uh, Tapu Fini hasn't taken its berry yet. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, if uh, Kangaskhan isn't quite free to be able to just pick up the double-edged KO because the first hit will activate the berry... Yeah. The uh, Tapu Fini will regain its health, and then the second hit will uh, come into play. So probably going to get KO'd himself uh, and not KO the um, Tapu Fini. But we'll see if... Uh Lorenzo predicts this Incineroar coming in for the Groudon here. Yeah, I love this Incineroar coming in. Not only does it get the Intimidate off against that Genghis Khan, um, it also removes the sun from the field, leaving that Tapu Fini free to go for something like a Scold and pick up the KO against that imposing Genghis Khan. Um, Genghis Khan going straight for a double edge, though, into that Tapu Fini. Is it going to be enough? Oh, yes, it is. Thanks to the little double kick there um, by the little Genghis Khan. Um, I was going to say the Intimidate would have helped a lot against that, mm. but unfortunately... The big effort of that double edge means that Genghis Khan will also go down in recoil. Lunala able to go for a Moongeist Beam here, which again is another reason why I love that Incineroar switching in. It can take the Moongeist Beam so much better than that Groudon could have. Yeah, and I think we're we're probably seeing the uh, item that Matthias is bringing to uh, this game. We see uh, the, the odd occasional uh, Assault Vest Incineroar. Most mm -hmm. of them, they opt for the berry, making sure that they can, you know, keep Regain themselves healthy and, and make sure that they can keep switching in. But hey, another way to do that is to make sure you just don't take the damage in the first <laughs> place. Uh, and that's what we're probably seeing from that Matthias based on uh, the Moongeist beam damage there uh, coming into the Incineroar. Um, so both fake outs in play. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't seen these uh, Incineroar, how they match up in uh, their speed. So uh, we might see the... Uh, <laughs> the rule of VGC coming out here. <laughs> Polite uh, fake outs across absolutely. the board. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it may be that Matthias just needs to try and go for that fake out onto um, Lorenzo's Incineroar just to make some headway here. Oh, but it's going to be Lorenzo's Incineroar going first into the Incineroar of Matthias, so it's unable to go for the fake out that I believe it was going for there. As Unala follows up with a Moongeist Beam, so no protects on Matthias' side. He's free to target down whichever Pokemon he wishes to, but wisely goes into that Groudon, is enough to pick up the KO, and then he's got both of his Pokemon facing down against this Incineroar. Yeah, a brilliant play there for Lorenzo for the whole game. Uh, do you know what? It's it's been a it's been a really close game. Both uh, both players took in game one the early game advantage mm -hmm. uh, and the late game has ended up being close <laughs> anyway uh, so you know really good play from Matthias just keeping himself in the game um, he's I'm sure seen some information that he needed going into game three and made sure he's got the most out of that game even though he he got put on the back foot straight away uh, right at the start of the game um, so you know going into game three do we think we're going to see anything different I mean, the mind games are going to be real right now. Game <laughs> three, they led the same Pokemon. They had the same kind of strategy at the beginning. But the big difference was Lorenzo went bold and made sure he got rid of that stack attacker with the double in. At the same time as Mateus maybe also played it bold, not going for the protect, um, thinking that Lorenzo would assume he was going to play defensively. So it, 
I wonder whether in game three it's going to come down to the same situation and then they've got to make that prediction. Or in game three, are they going to completely change it up and just shock their opponent? We've seen, um, I think there was a Salamence as well on the team. Mm. That could be a Pokemon that could come and give off another way of Intimidate before it Mega Evolves. Yeah, certainly could do. Um, I think the uh, it's going to be quite hard to bring the Salamence for Matthias uh, mm. in this game because, you know, he's always going to be pressured by that Xerneas. Uh, we've seen that Lorenzo has so many ways to try and protect it and try and keep it on the field. But, you know, maybe we see uh, slightly different leads from these these players going into game three. Uh, we've seen the Stack Attacker um, and Both Incineroar <laughs> and Kangaskhan and Xerneas, but maybe uh, it could be that uh, Lorenzo opts for to lead that Lanala instead. Uh, maybe put that menacing moon, moon rays Maelstrom <laughs> pressure onto the field. Uh, it's a little bit of a tongue twister and does quite a lot of damage at the same time. So, you know, top quality VGC moves there. <laughs> exactly. And you could have sort of Lunala versus Lunala as well, um, which is always quite a worrying situation, particularly if there's something like a speed tie going on. It can be a really dramatic couple of seconds while you wait to see which Lunala is going to go first. Um, I think that our, both our players are just trying to get settled into this game three. Um, the judges are there on hand to get into it. And that's just building the anticipation more for us, Ben. I know, I know. <laughs> I really want to see how these players adjust to, to this game. It looks like we're... Uh, just we're having to reset. Yeah. Turn it off, turn it on again. Uh, <laughs> let's see how we go. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I think um, you know that that Lenala could play a much a much earlier uh, role in mm -hmm. the team for Lorenzo. And I think actually equally maybe it, it could be that the Groudon takes a, a, an early uh, start from Matthias' side of the mm -hmm. field, not having to switch it into those big attacks and actually on the field turn one precipice blade pressure. Um, not something to be uh, that you you tend to ignore. You wouldn't necessarily expect it either, particularly with the Incineroar on the field. It's either going to lead out or it could switch in and get that Intimidate mm. off. But at the same time, a Precipice Blaze onto an Incineroar, whether it's switched in or not, and even at minus one, that's going to be some good damage um, yep. for Matthias' side yep. of the field. And he's going to be able to start whittling away at um, Lorenzo's Pokemon, which could just put him in that end game situation. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, other than the Stack Attacker's Gyro Ball onto... Uh, Xerneas, we don't actually see too many ways for both of these players to really one-hit KO uh, any Pokemon that are on the field, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, that Menacing Moonrays Maelstrom, likely that Matthias, we see this quite a lot, uh, has trained his stack attacker to be able to survive that Menacing mm -hmm. Moonrays Maelstrom um, from full HP. So, you know, that doesn't quite work, potentially. The Groudon might be trained in the same way on Matthias' side of the field. So, you know, you've got this real... Uh, situation where these players have got to really pivot about mm -hmm. how how and and decide you know when do you launch that big attack <laughs> exactly you've got to time it right because once you've used it it's gone there's there's no getting it back in that game yeah exactly exactly but I think the big thing for me is that stack attacker like you said you can train it to survive that Z move from Lunala um, meaning that you pretty much always have to double up into it we saw that Lorenzo had to do that in the previous game as well yes maybe if he didn't have an intimidator Genghis Khan low kick would have been enough but Judging by the way that Mateus has been playing and Incineroar's everywhere, um, very likely they will be at minus one. So it's making sure that you will have the utilities to be able to take down that stack attacker. But at the same time, if you're doubling into it, the opposing Pokemon is just free to go for a move. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, it's, it's how these players take advantage of those uh, turns where, you know, they're not quite putting so much pressure on the field because they have to protect or they have to switch or they mm -hmm. have to or maybe somebody, somebody's double targeting. But just a quick recap here, Lou, take us away with team preview. Oh, well, I was, I was just about, <laughs> honestly, just about to, and then it jumped off the page. These players are ready. They've had to wait for this game three. Um, but just one Pokemon that's on there is that little Amoongus. I don't think we're going to see it as Tapu Fini is so prominent, um, but just wanted to give it a little, little bit of a special shout out. It would have been quite good in the Trick Room situation if that's something that Lorenzo um, wouldn't be able to get around in the next turn. That's something that we've spoken about a lot. Trick Room, how's he going to get around it? Um, and Amoongus could be an option, but... I do not see an Amoongus at the moment. I see a Genghis Khan and a Xerneas leading for Lorenzo as Matthias has gone for the stack attacker once again, but this time paired up with Lunada. And I believe this is the first time he's brought that restricted to the set. Well, did you bring a coin with you, Lou? Because oh. we don't know which one of these Pokemon is going to set up the trick room here. <laughs> uh, really good adjustment here from Matthias uh, going, uh, you know, giving uh, Lorenzo that choice to make. Does he go for the low kick into uh, the stack attacker or does he instead go for uh, a double target into uh, the Lanala with something like a bite and a moon, moon blast. We just don't know. Um, 
So really good adjustment there from Matthias, really giving Lorenzo something to, something to have a think about. Yeah, this is definitely one that would bamboozle me if I was these players in this situation. Um, of course, Bite being a really popular move on that Genghis Khan for Lunalas, but also for that flinch choice. Um, we're going to see the stack attacker go straight for a protect here. It knows that there's low kick on there. It knows that it's going to be a prime target. Low kick, again, coming straight up from that Genghis Khan. No fake outs. And Matthias predicting that so well, going for the protect. <laughs> oh, actually, the double into that <laughs> slot as Trick Room comes out from the Lulana. What an amazing blame on Matthias, because even if there was a fake out, it couldn't hit that Lulana. It was going into the stack attack. Might as well protect. And hey, let's get Trick Room up. Yeah, so uh, did you pick <laughs> heads? No, you Ooh, picked tails. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, not going to quite come off there. Uh, so really good adjustment um, from Matthias in the first, uh, in turn zero, yep. uh, so to speak. Uh, and then carrying that through to turn one, uh, playing the mind games and saying, hey, look, I'm going to do something different, but uh, no, I'm not. I'm just <laughs> going to protect this stack attacker. Yeah, and also preserving his Lunala as well, um, taking it off the field so its Shadow Shield does stay intact, not going to have to risk getting that damage in any way, whereas Incineroar jumps onto the field now. That Intimidate against that Stack Attacker, also going to be crucial. Um, it will force Lorenzo to double up into that Stack Attacker if he wanted to pick up the KO, but of course you don't want to leave your Xerneas out on the field against something like a Stack Attacker. Um, so switching that out was a good um, call there by Lorenzo and also something that Matthias might have thought about. Yeah, indeed, and, and you know, Matthias making sure he's making the most of that uh, trick room, going straight for the Z move. Is oh. this going to be into the Incineroar on the switch in? Oh Let's my have a look. Goodness, I mean, yes, you would expect that um, Xerneas to switch out, but it could easily have just protected. Um, but no, Continental Crush, a stack attacker jumps into the sky in animation. That's oh. always interesting. It was not going into that slot, because of course, maybe if it did protect, it might be a waste of your Z move. But going into that Genghis Khan saying, you will not low kick me. <laughs> um, I mean, you will. Um, <laughs> but sort yep. of to show that it can also deal a big amount of damage. It Ooh. is enough, though, still to pick up the kill with a critical hit. I mean, Genghis Khan's got rage here right now. You Continental Crush me, I'm going to low kick you right back. Um, and, you know, great move there from the so removing that from the field. Ooh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a roller coaster of a turn there. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> Matthias getting that intimidate off, making sure the low kick doesn't KO uh, the stack attacker um, after that intimidate. But stack attacker's baby, in fact, saying, yeah, do you know what? Revenge. No, I'm going <laughs> to defend my mama. She, <laughs> you know, we want to get that low kick off and we want to get that stack attacker off the field. So uh, that's exactly what happens is uh, Matthias brings in this crowd and uh, going to put a great deal of pressure now back onto um, uh, Lorenzo's side mm -hmm. of the field and maybe gaining from a, a little bit of an increase in momentum here. And it's always good to see uh, when uh, Groudon comes in and Incineroar is already on the field. That means that Inci Intimidate can't yes. come in so soon. Um, so, you know, even though it wasn't the, the most ideal uh, Pokemon uh, count uh, Turn sort of way for to make Matthias, it happen. <laughs> you know, you, he gains the momentum at this stage. He certainly does. And interesting enough, Lorenzo switches out that Incineroar that he brought in and had the fake out for the Lunala, which actually <laughs> was to great effect um, in the sense that the fake out goes straight into a ghost type Pokemon. The only thing is he will bring his Lunala in and have the Shadow Shield broken immediately by that Precipice Blades. Genghis Khan goes down. It's done so well in this game three for him. And it now gives him the opportunity to bring back in that Incineroar um, to get the Intimidate off against this Groudon and also gain himself a fake out to sort of stall out another one of these Trick Room turns. But if you're Lunali, you have to worry about that in Cinemore as well. Yeah, exactly. So a decision to make for Lorenzo here. Does he take, you know, a little bit more damage from both of his Pokemon, from Precipice Blades, or mm. and, and try to target into that Groudon? Uh, does the Groudon decide that actually, you know, these two aren't too much of a threat without Fake Out in play and actually just go for a Protect here um, as, uh, you know, Lunala mm. maybe wastes its Z-move onto uh, the Groudon? Um, and, you know, maybe Incineroar free next turn to just attack that Lunala on Lorenzo's side of the field. Yeah, that's the thing. We've seen that the Darkest Larry is a move choice on the Incineroar of Matthias' side. So that's something you really do not want your Lunala to be connected with. So going for the fake out into that slot would probably be the optimal choice there if you're Lorenzo. Um, that's exactly what we see. As well, the Groudon going for a protect. I really like that from um, Matthias' here. He could potentially have switched out the Groudon, mm. uh, but then he would have had to bring in his Lunala, which does not want to take any ghost type moves from the opposing Lunala. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, Lorenzo's now going to have to make that decision. Uh, what Pokemon does he want to take a load of damage? Because mm. someone's taken a load of damage this turn <laughs> um, as Lunala switches out into Xerneas. 
Yeah, Zerny is going to jump back onto the field here. Um, possibly wants to get herself into a position to get a Geomancy up in the next couple of turns and then put Lorenzo back into that position we saw him in game two. Once Trick Room's over, he's got the Geomancy Zernius and he can start dealing out some damage. Incineroar Matthias aside though, going for that Darkest Lariat, now into a Fairy type, going to be a lot less damage, a little slither of damage than it would have been going into that Lunala as Incineroar on Lorenzo side goes for that U-turn. This could be the opportunity he needs to bring back in um, that Lunala um, as Trick Room ends so that he can gain a lot more offensive pressure, potentially use that Z-move as well. Yeah, indeed. And and actually, we, we will see the Lunala come in. Do we see a Precipice Blades? Do we see Matthias really taking advantage of that damage output? Oh. Ooh, Lunala oh. coming in and uh, avoiding that attack, uh, not quite landing on the field there um as it comes in but Xerneas really not taking that much damage from the precipice blades no exactly intimidate um i believe it went off onto that groudon so mm. um it will be helping out Xerneas and the lunala there um again both pokemon that can apply a lot of offensive pressure going to the next couple of turns yeah certainly and, and lorenzo's certainly got the uh, opportunity to just bring that lunala back out get that intimidate off uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we can see uh, an Incineroar on the field, so another Incineroar is likely to join it soon. <laughs> um, and that's going to bring that uh, Groudon right down to a really low offensive presence um, in this game. Xerneas may be free to just set up a Geomancy, uh, go into the, the last turns of Trick Room, um, come out the other side uh, and just... Uh oh, here we go. Z-move straight off the bat from Lunala. Um, going to be dealing out a huge amount of damage was going into that opposing Groudon. I did not see a Protect. No, no, certainly not. And we didn't see uh, that, that Lunala go, uh, go first at all uh, before. So maybe actually the Trick Room uh, actually didn't quite <laughs> last as long as we thought it did there. Um, so being set up on turn one. Uh, but that uh, Menacing Moonray's Maelstrom mm -hmm. going into that Groudon is uh, going to do a lot of damage to... Yeah. And this is something Lorenzo really needs at this point as well. He wants to get that Groudon off the field as quickly as possible, trying to negate a lot of the big damage outputs that can weaken um, the Incineroar that he's got in the back as well. Because he wants to keep that Pokemon healthy, feel like it can safely come in and intimidate the opposing Incineroar, um, get some fake out off as well. But if you bring it into a Precipice Blades, it's going to be dealing a lot of damage. Xerneas bravely going for the Geomancy here. Yes, it's going to get its boosted up, but it could potentially be taking two moves from both of Matthias' Pokemon. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Incineroar potentially go into it as well, double up with a Flare Blitz, because at the end of the day, it doesn't have to worry too much about the Lunala. It's free to target down into that Xerneas. Xerneas, first of all, takes a, a Fire Punch and a Flare Blitz is coming out as well. I think this is a double up. Yeah, a brilliant, brilliant move there from Matthias. Uh, correctly identifying that, you know, that Lunala... It doesn't like Incineroar, so hey, let's just leave it on the field for a bit. <laughs> we'll just pressure that Xerneas, and mm -hmm. maybe it does go for a uh, you know double target with Moonblast and Menacing Moonray's Maelstrom into that Groudon. But actually, if it doesn't, uh, we're going to put a lot of pressure on it and uh, just make sure we try and pick up as much of the KO as we can. Uh, worked out perfectly for Matthias there, uh, as he does deal with the Xerneas that didn't really get any value from its Geomancy at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Going into these final turns with... Incineroar and Groudon being able to uh, effectively deal with both uh, Lunala and Incineroar respectively. Exactly, there's really not a lot that um, Lorenzo has now against that opposing Incineroar that I was just about to say can easily switch out and come back in. <laughs> um, exactly what he's doing is Mateus does have that three Pokemon advantage as well. If you take a look at the clock, we've only got three, well less than three and a half minutes left on this round time. Um, and it looks like Mateus has put himself into a really strong position, not allowing Lorenzo the opportunity to whittle away through his team. Particularly as we saw the crowd on there go for the protect. Lunala though on Lorenzo's side, going for that Moon Guy's beam, catches the Lunala that jumps in for Matthias, but as the Shadow Shield was intact, um, oh, 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 able to look survive, takes the throat chop though. And interesting, I saw the Cobra Berry come out there. Yes. Um, I love that. That was an item I ran on my Lunala back in Moon series. Um, really, really great choice, but as it had already taken the damage previously, not able to survive. But a great call there from Lorenzo doubling in. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> that's a masterclass in how to take an offensive, uh, uh, take offensive pressure and just uh, Run you know, make the most <laughs> out of it. Um, doubling up into that Lunala, taking the KO, uh, really, really good play there. Uh, that uh, Groudon is just protected. Um, so the Lunala is on Lorenzo's side of the field, free to go for a Moonglice, Moonglice Beam. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, we could see that Groudon going for a double protect there. Um, not a good chance of it coming off, but Matthias in the position where he's probably got to take that uh, take that risk. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Oh, 
The crowd on does go for a protect, oh. does get it. No. Um, oh, as Lunala goes in for a Moon Guys beam. Sorry, that crowd on just took all the wind out of my mouth there. Incineroar going for the U turn into the imposing Incineroar, going to do a good chunk of damage. But it does leave this Incineroar free to go for that Darkest Larry and pick up a KO against Lunala. That is actually heartbreaking for Lorenzo because if he was able to get that Moon Guys beam onto the crowd on and pick up the KO, then it would have been Incineroar versus Incineroar. Mateus says Incineroar had already taken a lot of damage, and if it's going for things like Flare Blitz, it's going to take itself in recoil. Oh, honestly, uh, such heartbreak there for Lorenzo. Absolutely, and, and oh. you know, <laughs> it's one of these things, you have to play for your outs. And hey, exactly, that's Pokemon. That's exactly what Matthias did, you know. Uh, the move is there, it's in front of you, and when you're in this game-free situation, you have to take every opportunity oh, to yes. get the win. So, mm -hmm. you know, Matthias, he, he did the right thing, and, and it came off for him. Uh, a little bit, as you say, heartbreaking for Lorenzo. And, you know, there was that opportunity for this Precipice Blades to miss, which, oh, it, uh, which it didn't. So Lorenzo, again, playing on, playing to his win conditions. Yes. These small chances, they do build up. And over a long tournament, you do see these kind of things come into play. Of course, the key thing is to never give up. And you never know what you might experience from the game as well. Flare Blitz going off into the opposing Groudon with a little critical hit as well. That's like a little bit of, come on, Incineroar. <laughs> um, picking up the KO there as the sunlight does exchange so when we're looking at both these Pokemon as well um, I think we saw the berry on Lorenzo's Incineroar we did we saw the berries on Lorenzo's Incineroar and we haven't seen a berry on Matthias's or I think you that's thought probably, it might be a salt vest didn't probably you? a salt vest so you know this is not going to heal up they're about equal footing here coming into this end game so you know gonna be what how these how these Pokemon match up speed wise how the intimidates come into play mm. uh, clearly uh, the Intimidate on uh, Lorenzo's side of the field playing a big part um, yes. with his Incineroar not doing quite as much damage as Matthias's. Um, but it also appears that Matthias is running one of the slightly faster Incineroars, mm -hmm. uh, speedy little cat there. Yes. Um, so getting that U-turn off first and probably going to be uh, the way that he closes out this game. Exactly. Having that faster Incineroar as well, just no, it gives you that... Oh, actually, um, it might oh. even have been a speed tie. The Flare Blitz coming up from Lorenzo's Incineroar here. It's oh. not enough to pick up the KO. Um, does a little bit of recall damage in return as Flare Blitz comes out from Matthias's as well. So what a way to finish this game, though. Incineroar versus Incineroar, the iconic Pokemon of the 2019 and the beginning of the 2020 uh, Pokemon season. Um, <laughs> Just amazing to see the two of them there fighting out and taking it right down to the wire as well. Completely, mm -hmm. completely. I mean, game one was a close game. Game two was a close <laughs> game. I don't game think three. you can get it much closer <laughs> than that. Uh, maybe one HP instead of 10 or 20. Um, <laughs> but, you know, just really, as you say, Lou, down to the wire. Um, really exciting game and great play from both players. A really backwards and forwards set. And you see how these players position well. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw Matthias. Um, setting up that trick room game one and uh, and uh, Lorenzo being able to get through that trick room and even with a boosted Xerneas so brilliant play on his side uh, came back to uh, came back the other way in game two and uh, game three so close the double protect absolutely mm -hmm. clutch coming in there from Matthias um, but hey this is how Pokemon works. Yeah, and I absolutely love the really bold plays that came out from both of our players mm. here. The way that, particularly in the transition from game one to game two, where they had really similar Pokemon, and they just made those minor adjustments, the gutsy plays, the bold plays that will sometimes just win you that game. Sometimes they don't pay off, but when they do, it really is so rewarding as a player to feel vindicated in the decision that you made with your Pokemon. And absolutely. both these players did that on across all three games. I love the adjustments as well we saw, with particularly with Matthias bringing his Lunala in that game three um, and able to apply that other pressure to the opposing Lunala. Yeah, but certainly not uh, not the tournament over for either mm -hmm. of these players. Uh, Matthias, one more win to secure his uh, day two and mm -hmm. coming back for the top 16. But I believe that some players that reach a 6-2 record uh, will actually make it through to day two uh, with that top 16 cut with so many players playing in this tournament. So, you know, still chances for Lorenzo. Uh, he could win his last match mm -hmm. if uh, Matthias wins could be a way for him to get up. Yeah, well, we're going to jump to the interview as soon as possible, folks, so do not go anywhere. <laughs> 